So this is part four of chapter five in CCNA one, where we will have a look at the different types of LAN switches. Switches are devices that are used on Ethernet. Uh, we have them uh, back here. We will also try to, to work with them in the lab. Um, they are typically layer two devices, which means that they look at the MAC addresses and filter traffic according to the MAC address. It builds up a MAC address table so that it will see which devices that are connected to which port uh, looking at their MAC address. And sometimes uh, when we need to have more than one network involved, we need to have a layer three device, which is a router to be able to route the traffic from one network to another. A normal layer two switch cannot do that, only operates on one network. So what happens? How will the MAC uh, populate its MAC address table? So here, if for instance, PC1 wants to send something to PC3, what happens is that first of all, uh, PC1 looks into its uh, ARP table and find out that, well, it does not have the MAC address of PC3, so it sends out a broadcast. The switch receives these broadcasts um, and will look into the source address field in the packet sent from PC1. So hereby, it already now knows that behind port 1, PC1 is uh, placed and it puts PC1's MAC address into its MAC address table. Um, then, of course, it will broadcast out to all the other devices. And when PC3 answers back that I have this IP address, then the switch will also know that PC3 is behind port 3 because it will look at the source address from where it's sent. So whenever PCs or devices begin to send something into the switch, the switch will look at the source address field and find out exactly uh, which devices that are placed behind which ports. If something is received into the switch with a MAC address that it does not know, then the switch will then broadcast out to all the other except the incoming, the one that we sent in. All the other ports will then receive a broadcast. And that is called the flooding. The duplex settings in a switch um, is typically full duplex, like we saw when we looked at the different cables here. We can just we can send and receive at both times, and we will normally do that. We can pre-configure the ports to be only half duplex, where we'll only be able to either send or receive at a time. But normally here we will send and receive and it will be automatically set to full duplex communication. This is collision free because we are the only one connected to that uh, end. If I connect this here and to my computer now, well, I'm the only one on this cable and I cannot make collision by myself. So, so this is a collision free network. Um, and it's a point-to-point -point connection between my computer and the switch. If this were a hub instead, well then we could have collisions because a hub is like a switch who doesn't know anything. Because a hub has no recognition of the MAC addresses. So whenever I send something into the hub here, then it will automatically broadcast out to all ports. And then of course we can have two different devices sending something into the, the hub at the same time and we will have a collision when, we, when this were a hub. If also, like here, when we have a switch connected to a hub, we will have the same problem here. So then we could, of course, put in that we will only have half duplex connectivity out to the hub. But these days we do never use hubs anymore. We can also set up um, the switch ports to be auto MDIX, which means that they will actually find out what is connected to the other side. If this is configured, we don't really need to think about whether we have a crossed 
cable or a normal straight through cable between the switches because they will configure themselves according to what we put in. Um, and most newer switches can, can be set up with auto MDIX. When we look at uh, these types of switches, um, there are different ways that it could handle the packages coming in. We saw uh, early in, in, in this chapter that a, a uh, Ethernet frame has different fields. The first bits are about the source address, uh, the uh, destination address, and then in the trailer we have the CRC check. The first one here, the store and forward method, is to read the entire packet and also do the CRC. And then only forward the package which are correct because we can make the CRC check and we can check that it is the same value and make sure that this is a valid frame and then sending it to the receiver. Or uh, we can do the fast forward thing. That is uh, looking at uh, only the, the, the destination MAC address and then start forwarding the packet according to the MAC address in the, in the to field or in the destination field and then just start sending it. That's the fastest way of doing it. And then we have the fragment free switching which is somewhere in the middle where we will at least read the first 64 bits because then we know it is a valid packet. Um, and if that is correct, well, then we can just then it's just start sending it. So that is something in the middle. And in some switches, we can actually decide what kind of a switching method we like. And in other switches, it is pre-configured and cannot be changed. Also, the memory buffering. Well, this is typically how uh, the hardware is placed in the switches. It could all either be port-based memory or a shared memory, depending on... Um, how the hardware is configured. Typically it is a port-based memory so each port has its own memory for the queue. If we have a port where the switch is, uh, where the, the server is placed then there will be much traffic to that port and then we can make a queue in the memory. We can also do that in the shared memory. Um, but then of course uh, we need to have some kind of rule how it's done. This is my Apple Watch calling. Okay, that's it. When we look at uh, the different types of switches, we can also see that uh, yeah, we can also see that there are different types and different uh, configurations. These are normal twenty-four port fixed configuration uh, configured switches. Um, we can also have modular switches, we can have switches like in this slide where we have power over Ethernet. So if I wanted to connect a, a access point to, the, to this port, well then it could be powered through the Ethernet ports as well. So when we buy a switch, I can buy them with power over Ethernet built in, which it could be a good idea. Also we can have fixed configuration switches, which is these. We can have modular switches where I can actually put in an extra module with, with 12 ports, for instance, over here. Um, these are the most high-end switches and the, the most expensive ones. I can also stack them. And this can actually be done with, by these three switches here. I can add a small cable on the back side, which then make them work as if it were one switch instead of three switches here. So we can just stack them so they work together as a switch. And we have these different um, modules, LG, connections that can be put in to make them uh, stackable. Then we have layer 3 switching, which is actually where the switch also is aware of the layer 3 protocol, which is IP. So we can actually see the IP addresses and it can perform simple routing task. It is not really a router, but the, um, the Cisco has made a protocol called Cisco Express Forwarding, which can be forwarded on the base of the IP address. Um, and then it will also work 
together with a MAC address. So a layer 3 switch is actually faster to simple routing tasks than a router is because this also still uses the layer 2 next hub address, the MAC address. Um, when we are using layer 3 switches, uh, we typically use them together with virtual LANs or VLANs. And each VLAN has its own virtual interface called a switch virtual interface or SVI. Um, then we have the routed ports, which where we can go in and say that this here now is not a normal switch port. It is a routed port instead. So um, it can be configured. Uh, to operate on layer 3 as well. And we can also create layer 3 ether channels. An ether channel is where I bundle, for instance, these three, three uh, ports to work as one. So this is now, instead of three 100 megabit connections, this is now a 300 megabit connection. Uh, so we can bundle the routed ports also, if we want that. Um, Yes, and we can go in and we can go in and uh, change the uh, the different ports. Like in this example here, we go to port number six and say that this is no switch port anymore, which makes it a router port. And then I give it an IP address and a no shutdown. And then I have this port now being an an routed port instead of a just normal switched port. And that's it for this chapter. Thank you very much.